I, and then state your name, I, do hear my promise that I will always use parentheses whenever I substitute values into an algebraic expression. And then use your best handwriting to sign your name. Also, please put today's date. Anytime anyone asks you to sign your name officially as something, you should date it. And then we are going to show why it is so important by doing two examples together. And this is where I need you to be ready to write as I'm writing. So we are going to evaluate this expression x squared minus 2x plus 3 for x equals negative 2. We are going to do it with parentheses and we are going to do it without parentheses to show that it can make a difference. I am doing it in pen, you may do it in pencil. I am doing it with pen because I have learned over the years that my dot camera does not pick up pencil very well. Please note that everywhere there was an X, I have now put a parentheses with a negative 2. On the next line, I'm just going to use a different colored pen to show that they're different, but please keep going in pencil if that is what you were using. I've got negative 2 squared. That means negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. And then next to it, it says negative 2 times negative 2. It's a different way of getting a positive 4 plus 3. And then I'm going to get use order of operations and just work from left to right because everything is adding now. And I get 8 plus 3. Eight plus three is eleven. You do not need to do this, but I am. I'm going to highlight that all the way around because that is our right answer. We have used parentheses to evaluate this expression. We are now going to do it without parentheses. When I do this without parentheses, I am getting negative 2 squared minus 2 times negative 2 plus 3. What happens right here, when I have negative 2 squared outside of parentheses, it changes it. We're actually going to take notes on what the difference is in just a moment. But basically that negative in this case is in front of the 2 and I'm only squaring the 2 and then I add the, the negative back to it because it's a negative 1. That means this is negative 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 is next and gives us positive 4 plus 3. Oops, and I didn't change my pen color. I was going to try to be creative. What is negative 4 plus 4? Zero. 
and this is incorrect. And this is correct. Following our work in our notebook yesterday, where I realized that there was probably confusion about this whole parentheses and a squared number, I thought it would be good of us to take our time today to make sure that we understand the difference. With that, we're now going to go and do this paper, which is going to show the difference between negatives when they're inside and outside parentheses. Now, honestly, I have been using this worksheet for years, but I first got it as a PDF, which means it's not easy to edit it. If I was to edit this, I would switch the order of these two columns. So I'm gonna have us take notes on them in reverse order. We're gonna do the equivalent expression first and then write down the, what the meaning is, okay? You guys with me? Yeah. No need to change color or anything on this. If I have negative two to the fourth power, what I really have is a negative one times two times two times two times two. Because this one has negative two contained within the parentheses, that negative is trapped inside the parentheses with it. So it would look like this if I was writing it all the way out. I think the meaning of this one is a lot easier to just put into English. This is negative two to the fourth power. Well, this one is opposite of two to the fourth power. Two. Because look what we have inside the parentheses here. Are they negative twos or twos? But by putting this negative in front of the whole thing, we're saying it's the opposite. And that opposite shows up over here when we're writing the whole thing out as the negative one. I just want you all to know, I probably taught this for three years before I really, really, really had it. If you can see it now and understand it, this is one of the reasons we take notes in this class. I don't want you memorizing this. When we're using it, I want you to get fluid with using it, but it is a fact you will most likely forget. And as long as you have the notes for it, you can come back and remember why it works. Does that make sense? There's things in math you need to memorize and they need to become part of what you do. This is not one of them. But it is an area where people make mistakes and as long as you have a place to go look, you'll be good. Okay? So, we'll come back to the value of these in a minute. Let's go down to this next one. What do you think this one should look like when I write it down? I could write it one of two ways, either two times two times two times two with a negative one out front, or I could put the negative one out front
but because there is a negative one out front or there's a negative outside the parentheses, both of these meanings start off with the word opposite. Opposite of, to, to the fourth power. Now this last one is where my writing doesn't fit inside this box very well. Is that a question? Is this example the same as this one? Yeah. It is, in a sense, because this one is just showing that the two is connected to the negative. This one is showing that I can put things inside parentheses and it doesn't change that. It's just made parentheses visible where they don't have to be. These two do mean the same thing. Why would they do it? They might do it in a problem like where you've simplified something down to get to that two and what was simplified down was already in parentheses. So they just kept the parentheses in the problem to show you but that used to say 6 minus 4 to the fourth power with a negative in front. And now we're just keeping what we simplified in the parentheses. You don't see it very often. Usually you see this because we like our shortcuts in math, and this is less writing. Really great clarification. All right, this last one is going to be a negative 1 outside of big parentheses, and inside of it, I get another double parentheses. Now, as we just noted in our conversation right before this example, this first one and this third one are basically the same thing. This one is the opposite of this one. What's the difference between this and this? There's another negative in front of it, and that negative in front of it tells us it means opposite. This is opposite of negative 2 to the fourth power. I've left the value off on purpose for now. These are all going to be some version of 16, aren't they? Yeah. In all four of them, we're multiplying four twos. Two times two times two times two is 16. What we need to figure out is which one of these are negative 16 and which one of these are positive 16. So we have got 12 minutes left, and I need you to know this. We've got four numbers to write in here, and we've got two pieces of paper to glue into our notebooks. In that 12 minutes, I want us to get those things done, but I want some thinking done by your team first. Don't write it on your paper unless you're using pencil, but go to your boards, erase your Venn diagrams, and decide which of these are positive 16 and which of these are negative 16. Let's say five minutes. If you're done sooner than that with your guests, sit back down and then I'll tell you the answers. Have reasons for your answers other than Elaine says so. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Okay, we ready? Ready for the reveal? Yeah. And then we'll get some gluing done. Sometimes weeks later. All right. The first one is negative sixteen. This is why it's important that we see order of operations in this because really what's happening is what's happening in the parentheses happens first and we get 16 and then we multiply it by the negative one the second one is dan what do you think it is a positive 16. this is positive 16 because we have negative times negative which is positive times negative which is negative times negative which is positive or the way I think of it I think of this as 4 and this as 4 and then they go together next one is negative 16 I mean we know that already because we've already had the conversation that the first one and the third one are really the same thing just with fancier parentheses right that means this last one, if it is truly the opposite of this one, must also be a negative, negative 16. Yep. With that, let's get some gluing done and we got to do it fast. Joan was not here the last time we glued. What is my gluing saying? Dot, dot, but not a lot. Here is the order I want them glued in. I want the parenthetical promise first. So when you open your notebook right now, you see this fancy note, uh, set of notes. We will come back to, I promise. When you turn the page on the back, there's that fancy fold out. Next to it, you're going to put the parenthetical promise. On the back of that, you're going to put this negative and, and exponents. So the next page of our notebook is blank because we're going back to back with our glue. Did I leave my notebook with you? No. Okay. Did you look over here? I mean, yes, you did, but not over here. Sorry, Jeremy. I meant it's not over here. I'm going to glue this down with six dots each. They're going back to back. We don't want tons of glue on this page. You don't need to fold them. They should fit on the page whole. So I think on the left side.
Thank you. 